things you have chosen to wear. I know it's a tough spot to be in, but to be his brother, to see how much he cares for God. I mean, I still am psycho, ask Uriel, but I get that from my mom. <laughs> what a great day. And knowing Carla, this, this day is about you guys. Hello. You look good. You look beautiful. Come on. Rain, I'm, I'm, I'm mic'd up. I'm 5-0. I'm 5-0. Hey, Kabasa Mufasa, it's Brendan back with another video. In today's video, we're gonna be covering all the equipment that we use for a wedding day in order to make sure that we record that crispy, crispy audio. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm gonna list the equipment that we use off from least important to most important. And the reason we're doing that is because the YouTube algorithm says that you guys need to stay for the entire video so people can see this video and everybody else can have nice, clean audio. For the first thing that we use is this Shotgun mics, it doesn't have to be this specific one. This is the Rode Video Mic uh, NTG. You can use whatever you shotgun mic you want. The point that I put this as the least important thing for a wedding is because really we just use this to record ambient audio. So whenever there's like reactions or clapping and, and cheering during like a ceremony after the first kiss, uh, we can have actually good audio that's not just from the scratch mic on the camera. If this is all you have. The key tip for this then to record vocals, if you really, this is all you had and you're just starting out, is make sure that you're gonna get this microphone on camera and you gotta get it close to the person that is talking. Just because you get a fancy microphone on top of your camera doesn't mean that the audio that you're capturing is gonna be super, super good. You've gotta make sure that when you're recording vocals with this, if you do, which I don't recommend, but if you do, try to get as close to the subject as you can. So our second most utilized piece of equipment is lavalier microphones. Now we use several lavalier microphones during a wedding. Now, if you don't know what a lavalier microphone is, all it is, is it's a super tiny little microphone. You can hide it in places, put it in the dress, you can put it inside the tuxedo, you can hide it where it's really inconspicuous. This is the way we record uh, first looks. This is how we record audio during the ceremony, most importantly. Bye Miles, take you Leia. Bye Miles, take you Leia. And I'm gonna start with the cheapest option. Uh, when we were first starting out, we had this Tascam DR10L. And the reason why we like this is because the microphone that it comes with is actually a really high quality microphone, so the audio sounds great. And then the recorder itself has a couple options to record at a normal level. So if somebody's kind of speaking normally, it'll record that. But for whatever reason, if somebody was talking and all of a sudden they start talking a lot louder, it will record a backup track at I believe 10 decibels lower, just in case if you were clipping in that little section for whatever reason, um, you have a backup track of audio that it was recorded at a lower decibel and you're saved there. The other cool little part about this is that the, the actual microphone jack that goes into the recorder is a screw. It actually screws on, so you really cannot yank this out. It's super foolproof, and even the record feature to turn it on, you have to hold it for multiple seconds in order for the recorder to turn on or off or stop recording. So this is really the foolproof method for wedding filmmakers, and these are really, really cheap now. Now, another option that we recently started using are these Rode Wireless Go 2s. When it comes with a receiver that plugs into your camera, it's wireless, and then two recorders, two microphones. And we really like this because it is super tiny and very small. And the, our main use for this is, you see we got a white cable, right? This is our white lavalier microphone because we use this to mic up the bride. With the Rode Wireless goes, the feed goes directly into the camera, so you're recording the audio directly in camera. You don't have to sync in post later. And the other benefit too is for whatever reason, if you lose the signal for, for whatever reason, the actual microphone has an internal recorder that records internally, and it's got like, I don't know how many uh, gigs of space in there, but um, it's enough for a ceremony at least. The most expensive, but our most preferred method for lavalier microphones is the Tentacle Sync Track E. During a ceremony, we've got the bride mic'd up, we've got the groom, we've got the priest, right? All mic'd up with lavalier microphones. Now, the reason we use the Tentacle Sync Track E's is because it records in 32-bit float audio. 
Now, 32-bit flow audio is just a fancy way of saying you're gonna record every level of, of noise possible from a recording. So prior to like 32-bit float, you had to set your levels. And what would happen in the past, if you set your levels too low, you couldn't pick up the audio that was being recorded. It was too quiet. And then in post, if you try to boost up that audio, you get a lot of noise and it sounds nasty. Vice versa, if you set your levels too high, then you run the risk of clipping your audio and getting that nasty distorted sound that you sometimes hear. Really, all you have to do is hit record on these microphones and it'll capture low sounds, high sounds. It doesn't matter if the groom is speaking softly or speaking super loud, you're saved, you're covered. And the other benefit is that all we have to do is turn the microphones on and then from your iPhone or a smartwatch, you can hit record and that has saved us a lot of times because during a ceremony, sometimes leading up to the ceremony, everything just gets super crazy and super chaotic. And as long as we have those microphones turned on, you just hit record and then you can see your recording and then you can even control the levels from your phone. So the tentacle sync track ease are the most recommended thing. And we also use those during a reception where we can just put it right next to a speaker as a backup source of audio for whatever reason. If we have some failures during the recording through the board, which I'm gonna touch on briefly, Last thing to record audio, which I think is the most important, my most preferred method, because I believe it is the most high quality way of recording audio. There's a lot of pros and cons to it, but using an external recorder, this is the Zoom F6 that I'm using, and it also records 32-bit float audio. It has six XLR inputs, it's overkill. Um, for weddings because typically you only need one. Now the most important thing for recording audio is making sure you plug into the board, the sound board. Now, if you don't know how to do that, it's okay. What you're gonna need is one XLR cable. Whoever's running audio during the ceremony or during a reception, we go up to them beforehand and we say, hey, do you have a line out? And when you ask for a line out, usually they're gonna be like, oh, what do you got? And you know, I usually just tell them XLR cable because I wanna plug in to a line out on the board that's an actual XLR line out. Now, there's some recommendations that I've seen on YouTube that says to plug into the speaker. I've had bad experiences plugging into the speaker because the speaker, sometimes the feed from the speaker is very like staticky, you get like rings, you, it's just a, not a good feed to plug into the speaker. It is the last resort though, if the DJ or the whoever's running the audio is giving you a hard time and refusing to let you plug into their board. But uh, plugging into the speaker obviously would be the last resort. But if you can plug into the board using an XLR cable and then plugging it into your recorder oops so all you do is you take this end you plug it into an xlr line out and then you get your other end you pretty much you plug it into your recorder and you just turn it on hit record and again it's 32-bit float audio so setting your levels is not as important anymore because it's going to record the wide range of decibel levels one thing i forgot to mention is to have a good set of headphones to bring with you so you can actually listen during the ceremony, you know, you can actually hear uh, your audio feed. Um, the ones that I'm using are these uh, K240 Studios, AKG240 Studios. That's the ones that I use, the cheap headphones. Um, obviously you could get better ones if you wanted to, but this is just what I use, they're like 20, 40 bucks or something like that. So the reason why we have this quarter inch adapter is because sometimes the DJs and people will be like, no, I don't have a line out. I can't give you a line out whatever whatever maybe they don't want to maybe for real they don't have one um that's why we have this little quarter inch adapter and what we do it's like all right cool that's fine what about your headphone line out for your headphones can we just use that during the speeches that's what i'll ask them and most of the time they'll be like okay that's fine and usually the headphone jack the line out where they where they use for their headphones they'll unplug it and we could plug this in and then we get the actual feed. And again, the third option would be to plug into the speakers. Now it's not ideal. Sometimes you do get a good, you can get a good feed from a speaker, but at all costs, really try and fight to plug into the board because you really want to get that high quality audio. If you have any questions, please let them put them down in the description box below. And I will see you guys in the next video. I know it's been a hot minute. 
It's been about a month and a half since I posted a video. A lot of things happening here at the Brendan Rogers household. Um, Y'all don't want to hear about it. I know. A lot of boring stuff. I will talk to you guys in the next video. See ya. Bye.